Hi there, how are ya? I'm Mr. Scoozy, and in this video, I want to show you my process of creating a custom painted leather wallet. While I'm painting a wallet today, this process and these materials will work for any leather product, including shoes and belts. I'm recording this video with my Google Pixel, and the autofocus definitely acted up a few times, uh, and some of the footage was quite blurry. I left it in though because I think still the video is informative and useful. Let's begin with a quick rundown of all the supplies and tools I'm going to use. Cotton pads. These are for the chemical used to strip the factory finish off the wallet. Leather preparer and deglazer. This is the chemical used to strip the finish off the leather product. You can also use acetone that you dilute slightly with water, or you can probably have decent results with nail polish remover, but I have never used that method. Leather paints. These paints are designed for bonding with leather. You really can't use ordinary acrylics for this. Uh, they're there are many brands, but Angelos is just the one that I happen to stumble across first. Primer and Finisher. These products are made by Liquid Kicks. The primer is designed to improve the bond between the leather and the paint. This flat finish is a sealant that will go over the final paint layer, protecting the art from scratches as well as stains, etc. This particular finish is for a dull, sheenless end result, which I love the aesthetic of. Brushes. Uh, anything you are comfortable with should work. I have bigger ones for base coating and finer ones for detail. None of them are expensive or fancy. Heat gun or hair dryer. This is optional, but it really speeds up the dry times with all the layers of paint you need. This is a wet palette. It's also optional. You can put your paint on anything. But the wet palette keeps your paint fresh for much longer, and it's awesome if you mix your, your own custom colors. If you need a color later for a touch-up, you won't have to remix it, which can sometimes be tough. They are very easy to make. You just need an airtight container, paper towel or sponge, parchment paper, and water. Fold some paper towel to fit in the bottom, wet it, add a piece of parchment. Bam! Done! The parchment is semi-porous, so it leaches moisture from below, keeping the paint wet for much longer. If you snap the top on it, the paint should still be fine to use the next day or two. Masking or painter's tape, also optional. You can use it to tape off areas to protect them from getting paint on them, or to hold things in place, like your sketch. Airbrush. This is extremely optional. It's more a tool of convenience. There are certain things you can't do without an airbrush, but for this project, I only used it to apply the flat finish at the end, and you can do that with a normal brush. Deglazing. This is the most important step. You need to make sure you remove all the finish, paying careful attention to areas that will flex and bend during use, such as the spine of the wallet. This is integral to the paint bonding well with the leather. It's not a matter of scrubbing, just gently wiping over the surface once or twice with an extra pass over areas like the spine. Priming. Two thin, even coats of primer are applied to the prepared leather. Make sure to get everywhere and let the first coat completely dry before adding another. This step isn't 100% necessary, but it's a bonus and makes for a nicer surface to paint on. Base coat. I like to paint on white. It makes all the colors brighter. If you're going for a kind of dark or more subdued design, you can just start with the black leather. The key is thin, thin, thin coats. The goal is to have each layer of paint bond to the leather, not just sit on top of it or it will crack and flake off. I only show the first here in the video, but I did around 8 or 10 coats to get the solid white. Use the hair dryer or heat gun in between coats to speed up the process. Base coat, the sequel. Same as the white, thin even coats, probably about 6 or 8 for solid coverage. Outline. Now it's time to trace out the outline of my design onto the blue. Pick the placement and trace with a permanent marker or something smudge proof. Or sketch right onto the wallet if you're confident. I used a product called Intercoat to put a thin layer over my outline to prevent any smudging, but it's not strictly necessary. Fill in. This is the same as the base coat. Thin, even layers, fully dry in between, 8 to 10. You might wonder why I didn't trace out my design when the wallet was all white and then paint the blue around it. You could do that. I just find it is hard to get the nice even blue layers while you're trying to paint up against a line. Um, normally I would just use my vinyl cutter to cut out a mask in the shape that I needed, stick it onto the white wallet, and then use an airbrush to put a blue coat over the entire thing. 
uh, but I wanted to use the fewest tools possible for this demonstration. Transfer. This process is one of the easiest ways to transfer an image. Flip your sketch over and trace all your lines with a pencil, like a 5B or a 6B would work the best. But you could also use an ordinary pencil, you might just have to go over the lines a few times to build up some graphite. Then you flip the sketch back the right way, line it up on your wallet with your fill-in, and trace the lines again with a normal pencil or a pen. This will transfer the image to the wallet. You may want to tape the sketch in place to keep it from moving. Time to paint your design. I've shown the paints that I mixed for this particular design in case you wanted to paint the same thing, but it really comes down to your individual project. Just aim for thin, even coats, let it dry in between, probably around six coats of each color. Take your time and use the heat gun to speed things up. A fine point brush is very helpful for this part, but don't spend too much on brushes. Buy the sets at craft stores, where each brush ends up being around a dollar, and they'll do fine for this task. Outlining. For this you can use a detail brush and some paint, or you can use a marker. Make sure the marker is permanent, waterproof, and archival, like this one that also has a brush tip, 
The brush tip isn't necessary, but it adds some variation to the line weights, which I like a lot. Done. I did the outlining off camera because I like to hold it right up in front of me close to my chest when I outline, and that's pretty hard to film. So the artwork's all finished, but it's uh, it's very shiny, and I you know, want to protect the paint while also removing the shine, so I'm going to use the flat finisher to do both of those things at once. There, much better. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you'll try this out for yourself. Uh, it's a fun process, and it's really not too hard. Mm, the paint is about the only thing you might have to go out and purchase specially, but it's not that expensive. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll try to do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.